Hello everyone, Hyper here and welcome to the patch 8.3 on Holy Death Knight Guide. This guide will focus mostly on raiding, however I will talk a little bit about AoE builds and some useful information that you can apply in any part of the game. If you have a question, you can leave it in the comment section below or you can also join my Discord where we can have a more extensive conversation about certain topics when it comes to Unholy DK. The first thing that I want to cover is talents. So in the first tier on single target, which most raid fights are some sort of single target with the occasional add, you will want to take all will serve. The only caveat and exception to this is that sometimes you want to take Clawing Shadows. Clawing Shadows is only good if your gear has naturally high mastery or you're running the Honed Mind Corruption, which is a mastery proc. Otherwise, in most situations, for most players, all will serve will generally perform better. For AoE fights, such as Hive Mind and Carapace of Nazoth, Infected Claws can also be very good. And keep those two fights in mind because further down the talent tree, I will tell you which is the AoE talent in all of the rows. And those are generally the two fights where we tend to see them. In the tier two row, you will take Ebon Fever in most cases. It just makes your virulent plague tick faster and deal more damage. For the bosses that I mentioned previously, Hive Mind and Carapace of Nazoth, you will want to take Bursting Swords because it pairs very well with the Infected Claws build. And again, those are the only two fights in the raid where I would even consider playing this. In tier 3, it's a utility row, so ultimately up to you. I prefer playing Asphyxiate, especially if I'm playing over 40 Corruption, because I can just stun the thing from beyond and it prevents it from reaching me. Um, and you can also use it in other situations, like on Hive Mind, you can use it to stop the Psionic Resonance cast, um, and you can just generally stun adds with it. Grip of the Dead can be situationally useful, especially in Mythic Plus and on bosses such as Vexiona, where you want to slow down the adds to make sure they remain in a specific spot, but other than that, Asphyxiate will generally be better. Moving on to Tier 4, in most situations you want to play Soul Reaper. This talent is obviously very good because it allows you to generate resources whenever you hit a point where you've run out of runes and that is a very useful tool to have. And also if you're doing a fight that maybe has a few adds on it, you can also snipe that extra haste right as the adds are about to die. A few players do prefer running Pestilent Postules over Soul Reaper with the AoE build, so with Infected Claws and Bursting Swords. On single target and with a single target build you never run this talent but with the aoe build some people do prefer it over soul reaper um myself i prefer soul reaper but a case can be made for both and again only run pestilent postules if you're running the aoe build and you're doing a boss like hive mind tier 5 is our utility and mobility row and you can take Soul Eater for fights where you feel like you're struggling to stay alive and you might be getting one shot by mechanics However, I prefer running Wraith Walk just because it gives you that little bit of extra mobility. And especially in Nihilota, I haven't really found a boss where I found it necessary to run Soul Eater. And the extra mobility from Wraith Walk is just super nice to have. In Tier 6, the most common talent is Epidemic. And you pick this talent even on single target. However, keep in mind that you do not actually press this talent on single target. So if you have a fight like Mott or Shadhar, this talent row is essentially a dead row and it provides you no benefit at all when it comes to DPS. However, once you introduce some adds, some cleave, that's when you start using Epidemic. And I will talk more about how to use Epidemic in the advanced tips section. Once again, this talent row has a choice when it comes to running the AoE build and that is Pestilence. The only scenario where I would consider or encourage running Pestilence is if the adds that you're hitting are no longer alive once your death and decay is over. The greatest example for this is the cure drones on Hive Mind. Those adds, even on Mythic, have very little health. So you drop your death and decay, you do your AoE burst, and those adds are dead. Which means that you're not gonna have time to spam epidemics. So in that situation, pestilence might be better for you. However, if you're looking for more extended cleave, then epidemic will still pull ahead. So in tier 7, the last tier, Unholy Frenzy has been the go-to and only choice for this entire expansion, however, we do have an additional choice this time around. With the popularity of the Vision of Perfection and Magus of the Dead build, which I will cover a little bit later, 
we do have an additional choice here, and that is Army of the Damned. Now, please take this with a grain of salt. I only suggest running Army of the Damned if you're using three Magus traits, Vision of Perfection, Major Essence, and the fight time, which is probably the most important part of these three, caters to you pressing Army of the Dead multiple times. For example, if the fight ends right after you press your second Army of the Dead, or you know, when, whenever the ghouls die, that caters to Army. However, if that fight time extends by another two minutes or so, then the Army of the Damned build will actually fall significantly behind the Unholy Frenzy build. So as a default, I suggest playing Unholy Frenzy in all situations, and once you're comfortable with the bosses and you can have a predictable fight time for how long your encounter will last, that's when you should even start considering Army of the Damned. Before that, just play Unholy Frenzy in all situations. Next, let's talk about stats real quick. Luckily for Unholy DK, the difference between your best and worst stat is actually not that huge. So I definitely recommend simming your character just to determine what's best for you. I generally have the best luck with stacking haste, then critical strike, and then for the next two it kind of varies. The difference between versatility and mastery and which one you prefer will come down to the build that you're running. For example, if you're running Magus of the Dead traits with All Will Serve, then typically versatility will be slightly better for you. However, if you're running the Clawing Shadows build, then typically mastery will be slightly better than versatility. So like I said, it depends on your character and your Azerite traits and what build you end up running. I also want to mention that on AoE, mastery gains a ton of value. And if you're running the AoE build, mastery should be your highest stat. All right, moving on to Azerite gear, there's only three Azerite traits that you should even consider playing. First one is Festermite. Second one is Magus of the Dead, and the third one is Heart of Darkness. These are the only three traits that you should see on an Unholy DK's gear in most cases. Most people prefer to play with Triple Fester Might and Triple Magus of the Dead. And along with it, I will explain in the Essences section, you will play Vision of Perfection Major. However, some Death Knights have better luck with playing Triple Fester Might and 2 to 3 Heart of Darkness traits but with this build, you will play Condensed Life Force as your major essence. For your secondary trait, there's pretty much only one choice that stands out above the rest of them, and that is Overwhelming Power. If you can't get Overwhelming Power, then Unstable Flames, Gut Ripper are all decent second choices. Also, keep in mind that if you're running a Heart of Darkness trait, you need to have at least 25 Corruption on your gear that is after Resistance, otherwise it is a completely useless trait. And this has actually happened to me, where I had these traits, but I was only running like 21 Corruption, and I was wondering why I was not getting the extra secondary stats. Moving on to Trinkets, Unholy DK luckily has a pretty wide choice of selection when it comes to Trinkets. We have two Trinkets from the previous tier, which is Ashvane's Razor Coral. This trinket is great in most situations, however there's a few fights where I would absolutely never consider playing this trinket just because you're not able to stack it high enough. The other one from Eternal Palace would be Font of Power, and that is a great alternative to play on the encounters where you do not play Razor Coral. From Nihilota we have basically two trinkets that I prefer playing, and that is the Vita Charge Titan Shard from Raden, which gives you a huge haste proc and also gives haste to your allies. And the second one, which I think is slightly less popular than the Vita Trinket, is the Humming Black Dragon Scale from Ratheon. And again, this is a haste proc. It is a much lower proc, but it's up for a longer period of time throughout the fight. There's a few other trinkets that can be situationally good as well, most notably Rizan's Gleaming Eye from Atal Dazar. Vial of Animated Blood is great if you're running the AoE build because it's a minute and 30 second cooldown, so it lines up with your burst and every single burst window you will have that trinket available to you. And the other one would be the Butcher's Block from Waycrest Manor, and again I would consider running that on AoE builds more so than on single target. Next, let's talk about Essences. 
In the major slot on single target, you have two choices, while on AoE, you have one choice. So for single target, your choices are between Vision of Perfection and Condensed Life Force. Like I mentioned before, if your gear has at least two Magus of the Dead traits, preferably three, uh, you should run Vision of Perfection because it allows you to press Apocalypse more often, to spawn more Magus of the Dead, to deal more damage. If you don't have any Magus, or maybe you only are running one, then you might have better luck with playing uh, Condensed Life Force because that just empowers your burst window a little bit and you're not really losing any damage because you're not running multiple Magus of the Dead traits. On AoE, in my opinion, Blood of the Enemy is the only choice you should go for. Focusing Iris is a far second if you don't have access to Blood of the Enemy. But Blood of the Enemy has great synergy with our entire toolkit when it comes to AoE because for those 10 seconds, while you have Blood of the Enemy rolling and you have your Death and Decay rolling with all your cooldowns, you will deal tremendous amounts of AoE damage. In the minor slots, the first two are fairly locked in. In the first slot, Memory of Lucid Dream is basically used on every single fight, on AoE and on single target. For the second minor slot, I recommend playing Lethal Strikes. Especially if you have rank 3, this minor essence will deal a fairly significant amount of your damage. Now for your third minor slot, you have the choice between three different essences based on your stats and the situation you're in. The first one would be Conflict and Strife. I recommend playing this if your gear has naturally low versatility. Like my character has very low versatility, I think I'm playing around 300, maybe 400. So getting that extra versatility from Conflict and Strife kind of supplements that. On the other hand, if your gear has a decent amount of versatility, then you're probably better off playing Focusing Iris as your major just to get that extra haste. The third choice here would be the Formless Void. The only situation where I recommend running this is if both your tanks are running Flame as their major essence, because obviously they're able to use that very often, and the Formless Void buff lasts 20 seconds, they're essentially able to keep it up for you for the entire fight. And again, you should only do this on fights where you're always within close proximity of your tanks so they can proc that essence for you. And they also need to be running the flame as their major. Otherwise, you're just going to have too much downtime on this essence and it's not going to be worth it. All right, next let's talk about corruption. And this is where a lot of people might disagree with what I have to say. However, corruption is still in the early stages and we're still figuring things out but I think I have a decent understanding of what is best on Unholy DK. In the S tier, we have Infinite Stars, Twisted Appendage, and Gushing Wounds. I don't know a single person who has Gushing Wounds on their gear, but if you have it, give it a try because it looks great in Sims, I just never played with it, but a lot of people tell me it's pretty good. With Infinite Stars, please keep in mind that as soon as you start adding targets to the fight, add spawns, you know, cleave, Infinite Stars loses a ton of value. As an Unholy DK, you're able to stack it fairly quickly, not as quickly as a Demon Hunter, but on pure single target, you'll still be able to stack it fairly fast since we have high haste. However, if you add even one target to the fight, such as Xanash, where you once in a while spawn some adds, you will lose a ton of value because they essentially steal your procs off of your main target. So even once you're ramped up, if you get a proc on an off target, it will deal significantly less damage. In the B tier, we have Honed Mind, Racing Pulse, Expedient, and Severe. So all of these are pretty great choices. Honed Mind tends to be a little bit better if you're running Clawing Shadows, whereas Racing Pulse is both good with both, but might do a little bit better with All Will Serve. Expedient and Severe, again, are just great choices regardless of the build you're playing. And then in the B tier, we have Echoing Void and Void Ritual. As an Unholy DK, like I said, most of the secondary stats are good for us. So Void Ritual, if other people are running it in your raid as well, is actually a decent uh, corruption to have on your gear. Echoing Void lost a ton of value, um, and it's definitely nowhere near where it used to be, but it's still alright if you don't have some of the other ones that I've listed. So for Cleave and AoE, there's a few choices to be made. Twilight Devastation is probably the best corruption to have on Cleave that lasts for an extended duration. 
This is because whenever adds live longer, it tends to offset the bad luck you can have with Twilight Devastation, where maybe you're not proccing it at the right moments. To use this as an example, on Hivemind, whenever all of the drones are in melee and you proc Twilight Devastation, it will deal a huge amount of damage. However, if you get bad procs and maybe you proc it between add waves, then your Twilight Devastation damage will be significantly lower. So that's why I'm saying that Twilight Devastation is great whenever the number of targets are alive for an extended amount of time, such as Mythic Plus. Then in the A tier, we have Honed Mind and Masterful. Um, on AoE, like I said before, we tend to prefer Mastery, especially if you're running the AoE build. And getting just more passive mastery and random mastery procs can increase your DPS a significant amount. Some of the other corruptions such as Void Ritual or Honed Mind are also pretty decent on AoE, but are not really in the same league as the ones mentioned above. Next, let's talk about the rotation and starting off with the opener. First of all, if you're using Font of Power, then make sure you start channeling it 6 seconds before you pull the boss. Then when the pull timer gets to 1 to 2 seconds, this is kind of up to you and on your reaction time, press Army of the Dead, then use your pre-pot, after which you should outbreak the boss and cast Dark Transformation as you're running in towards the boss. If you're using Coral, then make sure you apply it right after you cast the Dark Transformation, because you want to start getting it stacking as soon as possible. Also, if you're running CLF as your major essence, make sure you press it here as well. Once you reach the boss, you should cast two Festering Strikes, then cast Apocalypse. I typically tend to cast one or two Death Coils here just to dump some Runic Power, after which you use Unholy Frenzy and start spamming your Scourge Strikes. You should always use Scourge Strike until you completely run out of wounds on your target, in which case you should switch back to Festering Strikes or you should start dumping your Runic Power by pressing Death Coil. If you're getting Death Coil procs in your Unholy Frenzy, I tend to use them. However, if you're kind of low on Runic Power, then you can kind of sit on it for a while. Also, if you run out of runes while spamming Scourge Strike, this is where you use Soul Reaper just to get those two extra runes so you can press more Scourge Strikes. During Unholy Frenzy, you will typically get near capping Runic Power, and during Bloodlust especially, you will tend to overcap on Runic Power. Don't worry about this too much, just try not to overcap your Runic Power by a huge amount. Once you see it go above 90 or so, start using one or two Death Coils, especially if you're low on runes, just to make sure you're not wasting resources. Once your cooldowns are over, the rotation for Unholy DK becomes super easy. You just want to maintain Virulent Plague on your target by casting Outbreak whenever your Virulent Plague is about to run out. And the later you do this, the better without actually letting your VP fall off your target. Then you just want to spam Scourge Strikes if you have any wounds on the target. If you don't have any wounds, then just use Festering Strike to apply some and use your Death Coil procs as you get them. And if you get close to capping Runic Power, then use your Death Coils to dump that Runic Power. For your cooldowns, Dark Transformation and Soul Reaper will typically get a few uses between cooldowns, so just make sure you look out for those, and basically as soon as they come off cooldown, you should look to use them again. One thing to mention with Soul Reaper is that you should only use it when you have no runes or only one rune available to you, and this will just make it a little bit more efficient. The next time your cooldowns come up, just look to repeat this process. Basically, build some Festering Wounds on your target, and then when you're above 4, use your Apocalypse, followed by your Unholy Frenzy, followed by uh, spamming out some Skirt Strikes or Festering Strike if you need to reapply some Wounds. And then you just rinse and repeat until the fight is over. So for AoE, things get a little bit more complicated because it essentially requires you to set up a proper Burst Window. And this opener and rotation only applies if you're using the AoE build. So for AoE, do the following opener. Outbreak, which will spread Virulent Plague to all your targets. Then as you're running, cast a Dark Transformation. Now once you run into the pack, cast Festering Strike on a secondary target. Uh, so keep in mind again, on a secondary target that you're not trying to kill. Then switch to your primary target 
and cast a Festering Strike on them. Now here you should then press on Holy Frenzy and wait until you're above 4 wounds on your primary target. Once that happens, just use your Apocalypse. After Apocalypse, I tend to use an Epidemic or two, or if you're running Pestilence then just Death Coil once or twice, after which you will drop your Death and Decay, press your Blood of the Enemy, and then just spam Scourge Strikes for the entirety of your Death and Decay. With this build and with this setup, you should be able to have wounds up and be able to get a huge amount of damage during those 10 seconds. After your Death and Decay runs out, just spam Epidemics if you're running that talent, or if you're running Pestilence, then use a few Death Coils to dump Runic Power, um, and then just go back to a regular single target rotation. Keep in mind that you're not always going to be able to do this setup, especially if the pack lives a fairly short amount of time. You might not have time to get two Festering Strikes out before doing your whole burst, so just take one of those out of the equation and just do your burst on a single target, and that's still going to cleave it to everything around it. So this next section is advanced tips. Uh, these are not going to have a huge impact on your DPS, but they can be kind of nice to know about in case you're super comfortable with Unholy and want to squeeze out a little bit of extra damage. The first one and probably the most impactful one is Fester Might Min Maxing. If you're running three Fester Mites, it can be a decent idea to play around it a little bit. There's a few rules that you need to follow. For example, if your Fester Might window has less than about 10 seconds on it, don't start a new burst rotation. So you don't want to Apocalypse and Unholy Frenzy and do your entire uh, huge burst when your Fester Might is about to run out. This is because those stacks are not going to carry over and Fester Might will randomly reset in the middle of your burst and you're going to lose out on a pretty decent amount of potential damage. I suggest waiting until that Fester Might window is over and then starting a new window with your cooldowns so you're able to ramp it up quickly and deal a huge amount of damage with that bonus strength. This also applies outside of cooldowns. For example, if I have one wound on the target and one rune available, my Fester Might window just ended, and right here I have a decision to make. Do I use up that one wound on the target with a Scourge Strike, or do I sit around waiting for 3 to 4 seconds? And the answer is that you need to sit around waiting for 3 or 4 seconds. Even though it might seem counterproductive, you're actually delaying starting a new Fester Might window until you actually have resources to ramp up those Fester Might stacks a lot quicker. Otherwise, you would pop that single wound on the target, then you sit around with your hands in your pockets because you're not able to do anything else. And by the time you get resources back, you're actually halfway through your Fester Might already, so you're going to get less overall benefit from it. The second one is when to Epidemic, and in my opinion, this is pretty straightforward. Whenever you have two targets that are stacked, you want to press Epidemic instead of Death Coil. Unless you have a Death Coil proc, then you should still use it. But if the two targets are stacked or more, then use Epidemic. If you have only one target or your targets are spread and your Epidemic would not cleave each other, then use Death Coil. The third tip here is regarding Dark Transformation, and especially Mythic Plus players tend to make a fairly big deal out of this because it gets you a little bit of extra damage sometimes, uh, but it's the whole shenanigans with turning your pet's uh, claw ability off and on during or before your burst. This is not going to get you a ton of damage, and I would only consider doing it on huge AoE pools where you have 10 or even more targets, but if you want to do it, here's how. A few seconds before you want to cast Dark Transformation, you should turn your pet's autocast for the claw ability off. And you do this using a macro, which will be in the description box if you want it. And what this will do is it will pull up your pet's energy up to 100, so then when you cast Dark Transformation and re-enable the pet autocast for claw, then you will be able to get one, maybe two extra casts out during the entire Dark Transformation. And again, this is only worth doing on huge pulls. On even medium-sized AoE pulls, you probably won't notice a difference. And on single target, I'm pretty sure it's a damage loss. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope it helped you out. 
If you're interested in watching me live stream, you can find me over on twitch.tv slash Hyperion29. Or if you're looking for some coaching, you can also contact me through my Twitter or my Discord. Again, thank you so much for watching. and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.